<laughs> One, two, three. You know, the only other person that reminds me of is back when you would see King Diamond. He would do some different stuff underneath his makeup. Yeah, he did. He had kind of those chops going on and stuff, so... Yeah, it was obviously cool. He's a local uh, Texas guy now. Yeah, that's so. right. He is. I forgot about that. Yeah. In fact, uh, on our last album, you, on one of the songs, you hear some laughter in the background. That is actually King Diamond doing the really? laughing. Yes. <laughs> no kidding. That's cool. On today's show, Jay's pussy gets shaved. I end up running into a plenty of fish hookup at the hospital and the legendary Ghoul Town here and breaks it down with Jay, not for one, but for two episodes. That and much, much more on this episode of Live New Puppets. Don't say any potty words because my mom is listening. Oh, baby, I love you. You f***ing bastard. Hey, planet Earth, it's Live New Puppets. We're back. It's Bobby Puppet and I'm Jay Puppet. Go f*** yourself. Sounds like you need some... We ain't got no budget. We don't need no budget. I know what you need. Need some... Hey, do you know whose birthday it is this weekend? The lovely Elvira. You know what time of year it is, Jay? I'm going with Halloween. Isn't... I, I would have to say, like, Elvira is, like, Halloween's prom queen. The undisputed champion every fucking yeah, year. <laughs> Just that's who it is. I think her sense of humor is hilarious. <laughs> Dude, I learned everything about her. She was a groundling. Not only was she a very gorgeous, sexy, nude model, which I know if I would have known that when I was sixteen. Yeah, that would have saved a lot of time. Oh my enough for years. Well, Okay, I got I got your binky and your drink, and uh, before you go to bed, you want me to get you some watermelon balls? Watermelon don't have balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god! I love you. You know, they had this. You know, the Uber is yeah. right. Well, they've got this new thing called Goober, and it's like. People with pickup trucks comes by and just picks up shit for you. Hey, you, hey, you need to get rid of some stuff. Hey, hey, you, you. Oh, golly, look at all this stuff we can haul. You want this wheelbarrow basket? Hey, hey, I already got a, a rack for my guns, but I'll take another. We can recycle that. That's like three dollars. You know what? We should put an ad on Craigslist that says free upright player piano and a blowjob too, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we can incorporate all of Craig's list in one of ad. Watch your email explode. <laughs> hey, what, can you send me a picture of the player piano? And here's a picture of my penis. Or the upright <laughs> piano. Can you send me a picture of the upright piano? Oh, by the way, here's a picture of my penis that you're going to suck. Yeah. There you go. dun 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 dun, dun. Plug the phone cable into the computer, children, and watch what happens next. And then, your mom comes in and closes the window you left open, and there's a pop-up ad of the type of porn that you would never even <laughs> think about typing in, but some reason, it was the pop-up ad, and now your mom thinks you're masturbating to blank. I swear to God. God, Mom, I was looking at Asian lesbians. I swear to God, I was looking at Asian lesbians. I did not look at that. I really just don't know how that came up. Stupid computer. I think I just wrote one minute of comedy for Sunday night. I swear to God, Mom. All right. So, I got this operation. I only got five stitches. Bottom line, says oh. only five stitches. They got to put me out. I get there. Pussy. And I sign in. And, um, and the line is sign in. And a, a short, very beautiful, very fit, Asian, Filipina nurse comes up to me. A pinye. 
And uh, she says, are you so-and-so? Like, she's looking for a patient. I said, no. Then she gave me this look like, I remember you. <laughs> I look at her, and I think, I remember you. <laughs> and Would I remember her? Uh, it, it turned out to be uh, right when I first got divorced and I got that apartment in Rosemont. Yeah. I hooked up with a, a traveling blank. Well, I guess I have to say nurse. <laughs> I hooked up with a traveling nurse, and she was looking for a gangbang. So I was like, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> when she got there, it was me or nothing. It's just me. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm going to do my so, best. So, yeah, so I'm like... Uh, I'm sitting there, she keeps walking by, and I keep remembering more and more, because we had sex literally, like, on and off for three and a half hours. That was it. Never hooked up again. She claimed to be married. That's not the interesting part. Right. <laughs> so, I'm getting gassed up. I'm totally fucked up. I'm out. I wake up. Totally. First of all, I'm, I'm gassed up. The guy's just making me talk, just to entertain himself. As I fade away. And then I wake up and I say, I had sex with that Asian chick. <laughs> you called her out. No, as no, that's not even it. That's not even the high point. The number one orthopedic surgeon on the arm, like in <laughs> Illinois, <laughs> probably more states, is on the other side of this curtain. The doctor is Chinese, and I'm screaming out that I had sex with this Asian. <laughs> and then I feel my arm get twisted like I'm in a karate fight. <laughs> I think she's pissed. <laughs> I pass out. I wake up, and uh, my arm was like turned six different ways this Sunday. I, my, yeah, I got beat up a little, I'm sure. I, I'm surprised I didn't get punched. <laughs> but when you surprise somebody, and you had sex with somebody... Four years ago, and then you see him in a hospital, and she's working there, and you're like, wow, what a fucking small world. <laughs> he had six sex, like, 60 miles away from here. <laughs> and here you are. Yeah, so that was my operation. <laughs> that's when you, that's what, hey, that's when you turn around and go, hey, you want to come back to my place for a gangbang? My mom will drive, because <laughs> my mom was there. So I've got five stitches in my arm, and I'm too embarrassed to go back to my super fucking hot Chinese doctor and get him pulled out, figure I might be exposed to more pain. <laughs> so when she takes out the stitches, so I decided to do it myself last night. I just pulled them out. Uh, actually, you could probably fill that thing with, oh, you know what you could do? Too bad pitas aren't a little bit better tasting because we could fill those with some cream. That would taste good if you had the right bread. The bubbly bread would uh, You know work. what you do with a pita? Oh, this is sick. And this is so bad for you. You take butter, melt it, put it on there, and, and sprinkle it with uh, cinnamon sugar. That's a pita. Dude, that is so southern. I know, right? Is that where you learned it? Uh, yeah, I watch the girls do that shit all the time. I'm like, I can't eat that. That's gross. <laughs> I remember the first time, the, the first time you barbecued, you put a stick of butter a half a stick of butter, <laughs> at least a half a stick, if not a whole stick of butter on every steak. Yeah. And it was fucking good. <laughs> yeah. But it yeah. kicked my you're ass You're going to get a sideways. heart attack, but it's yeah. fine. You're going to eat well. You eat once, then you're good. Yeah, you can hear your arteries hardening as you're eating the steak. <laughs>
That was Under the Phantom Moon by Ghoul Town, with Jake Middlefinger on lead guitar, Lizard Lazario on acoustic guitars and vocal, Santi on bass and vocals, Dalton Black on drums, Randy Grimm on trumpet and percussion, and Count Lyle on vocals and guitar. The Count has made time for us today, and he's here right now. How's it going today? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks, man. We, uh, we finally got our schedules to match up. You've been real busy, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one for me. We're glad to have you. You guys are a little more down the road than most of the bands that we do. Uh, you've uh, you've got a new album coming out, though. Is right? Yeah, we hit the studio uh, this week, as a matter of fact. So it is imminent. That's going to be exciting. You guys just wrapped up a show over at Guess Monkey as well. Yeah, yeah, we play. You know, Dallas being our hometown, we we, we play here uh, maybe twice a year or so, um, which is always a great time. You know, we got you know, obviously a good hometown following, so it's always a great show. Yeah, sellout was the word everybody used. <laughs> the place was packed. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like you had a good turnout. How did this all come to be? I mean, you... Well, I, I played in a metal band called Solitude Eternus back in the late 80s and early 90s, but I'd been playing music for a decade prior to that and originally started in punk bands when I was a kid and played a lot of the underground hardcore shows um, in Dallas and Texas, and uh, it kind of expanded my musical horizons when I started doing the metal, and uh, following that in the mid-90s, I decided to, I was kind of done, done with doom metal and uh, wanted to do, kind of return to kind of the punk metal roots, and so I did a, a brief project there uh, before basically stumbling onto the concept of Ghoul Town. Uh, the band started in 1998, and it was born out of some riffs we were doing that kind of had this dark Western feel. I'd always been a fan of, of old outlaw country. I mean, I'm raised in Texas. My parents listen to that stuff. And uh, things like Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, that sort of stuff. So it was kind of in my blood. But as, a, as I grew up, of course, I got into punk and metal. Um, so essentially I just kind of found a way to mix all of that together, uh, along with my love for spaghetti westerns and, and horror movies and put that into a blender and we came up with Ghoul Town, you know, people don't forget and, and stands out from the crowd. That it does. People love the western gunfighter motif, so anytime you, you kind of combine that with some, uh, you know, good music, then people tend to respond to it. Okay, so the bullet vest, is that uh, those live rounds? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we can't, uh, you know, technically... No, of course they're not, divulge, is what you're supposed to say. <laughs> divulge that or not, I can tell you that when we, you know, every time we leave the country to Canada or Europe and we're flying out, somehow that is a huge issue. <laughs> That's coming to question, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if it's packed on the, you know, the bags that are... It's not in a carry-on bag, obviously, but yes, right. uh, it is. Every time the band travels, it's it's a problem with that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I would imagine so. We got to Europe once, and they were just they were just taken from the bag. I mean, they were just gone with a note that said you know illegal contraband, and you know everything was gone. So we actually, I think we were in Germany, and a lot of the metalheads dress in those kind of belts. We managed to find some, but yeah, next time we'll have to uh, either ship them ahead of time or, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's how I would do it. You've got some awesome facial hair going on. I mean, like you've got it figured all out. The type of precision you use is my, does somebody do that for you? Or are you doing that yourself? Uh, that's <laughs> I mean, you've got it all figured out, man. I was like, he's, it's like, it's perfect. I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it takes work, let me tell you, but, you know, that was part of the look. I'm sure, you know, I kind of developed that from the combination of uh, the bad in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and right. Vincent Price, and Ming the Merciless, and all this stuff that I liked as a kid. I always like, I'm going to grow a mustache and a pointy beard like that, and, you know, I did. So. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, it, it seems like in every video it's a little bit different. And it, That's right, yeah. Was, I think the Dallas Observer recognized me as, like, coolest facial hair one year in some kind of stupid blog. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, Do I get an award for this? I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? 
Yeah, I mean, I never won a Grammy, but my facial hair got, you know, to got three recognized. crops. Right, so, I mean, you know. It's Maybe I should open a restaurant now. <laughs> yeah. You know, the only other person that reminds me of is back when you would see King Diamond, he would do some different stuff underneath his makeup. Yeah, he did. He had kind of those chops going on and stuff, so, you know, it was obviously cool. And he's a local uh, Texas guy now. Yeah, that's so. right, he is. I forgot about that. Yeah. In fact, uh, on our last album, you, on one of the songs, you hear some laughter in the background. That is actually King Diamond doing the really? laughing. Yes. <laughs> no kidding. That's cool. Where, uh, where can fans officially buy your shirts and, and the CDs? We, uh, we're going to offer links to on the show notes so that people can see this. But Well, obviously, the best place to start would be our website, ghoultown.com, G-H-O-U-L-T-O-W-N.com. And, uh, you know, you can pick up our music on Amazon and iTunes. You know, we sell physical copies of the CD on our website. We've also, we're doing some reissues on 12-inch vinyl that are coming out this month, actually. So, um, lots of stuff. So, yeah, just just drop by com. Count, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I really enjoyed hanging with you. That's good. Thanks for having me. There are millions of suburban white teenage boys who never heard a guitar chord or even know what a guitar solo is. You could save them by just donating $1 a day to save the white boy from rap music and care of live new puppets. <laughs> it's like UNICEF <laughs> yeah. for wiggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Millions of white suburban teenage boys don't have belts. But very colorful and expensive underwear that they show off. This was real. This was legit shit. He was an army ranger in World War II, okay? And he was the real deal. Him and his squad took a bunker of Nazis, killed all these guys, and he grabs the Nazi flag off the bunker. Hell yeah. But apparently he also grabbed a belt off of one of the soldiers. Hell and he brought yeah. all this stuff home. So he gets home and... And his mom is washing the flag because it was dirty. Well, he doesn't know this, but... She actually... Next thing... so... No, no, no. So, wait, wait. So she put... she puts the flag on a clothesline outside to dry. And within an hour, FBI is over there questioning why do they have a Nazi flag hanging up in the backyard? <laughs> All the neighbors are like, fuck. Huh? Holy oh, shit, it's back. I sit next to them at church. I had no idea. <laughs> then the news shows up. All right, so g- getting back to the whole belt That's thing. That's the one time you don't want to have a, a Nazi flag in America is right after World War II. Yeah. Ever do you ever want that shit I just America. washed an ISIS flag, and here it is now. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, Do they have a flag? Yeah, it looks like dildos and stuff. It looks like little penises all over it. <laughs> this is our flag with little penises? Dude, there was a gay pride parade, and CNN covered this thing, right? But they made a huge deal out of this flag, because it looked like an ISIS flag. But if you look closely, it was actually little phallic symbols. And they were like, I wonder why ISIS is here. Do they support gay and lesbian rights? (laughs) It was so ridiculous. We are infiltrating (laughs) the power vote in America, because uh, this year no gay people came to the pride parade. It is just straight people and politicians. All the gay people are in a bar seven blocks from here. Yeah, that's what happened in Chicago. I don't think any gay people went to the pride parade this year because it was all uh, straight people and, and politicians. <laughs> they had to move it. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> dudes, this is getting lame. We can't even ride on the float with our pants off because kids are bringing the parents are bringing their kids here. <laughs> How am I supposed to walk around on the street with assless chaps? I'm trying to teach my child democracy in a republic.
and there's naked men on top of floats flopping around. <laughs> uh, well. Mm, 29 minutes. Perfect timing. Why don't you come in for a slice of birthday pizza? Mm. Keep the change. Do you notice that my areolas are bigger than your pepperonis? Mm. Why don't you take a sip of this? It'll make you tired. Meow. No, don't leave. Please, stay. Please, sit. No. Please don't call the police. Please put your cell phone down. Please. Here, take a sip of mine. Please, I'm on house arrest, okay? It's my birthday. There we go. Yeah, they all look the same. I can't even tell the difference between a boy and a girl until they're like at least 16 or 17. They all look the same to me. And they're just little noise boxes. Little noise boxes. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like a dog. I can't tell the difference. Cat walks up to me. What's a cat always showing his asshole off for anyway? He's like, you ever seen one of these? Like, yeah, so I'm going to get a dark gun. I told you what happened to my cat, right? Like, Nerf. Nerf gun. I had the groomer guy come over, and we have to use a specific service because they'll also do the cat, which is kind of random. And Oh, for the dogs and the cat. Right. So, he gets, and this is not the first time this particular groomer has visited Pepper. Huh? Uh huh? I was just explaining you have two scary ass guard dogs. Yeah, they're a little. It's kind of like Lenny. They're real gentle and stuff, and then they go savant and kill things. It's just it's yeah. kind of frightening at times. Right. You don't want to bring kids or unexpected Small pests. animals don't do well in my backyard at all. No. But this cat has survived. Yeah, no, the, cat, the cat's had seniority, so he's uh, he kind of runs a roost. Uh, in fact, one of the dogs is just actually terrified of him. It's kind of funny to watch. You've got a 50-pound dog fri- frightened of a 9-pound cat. That's the worst cat. smell I ever smelled. The dog's in there. It's the, what is that smell? Oh, my God. That's what that smell is? One of those? So, I told the groomer. Yeah, those things smell. I said, hey, you know, he's kind of a long-haired cat. Can you kind of trim down the backside? You know, not that we really need to see the cat's asshole anymore. He already shows us, but it'd really be yeah, nice if shit wasn't getting stuck to his fur. What I get back can only be described as a little tiny black lion. His entire body has been shaved <laughs> after behind his neck, and he's even got the like the little poof on the tail. And a and a mane. And a mane, I know, right? And and like his paws, if if you if you were covered in fur and they shaved you, they stopped at his knees. <laughs> so it looks like he's got four little boots on. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> We got to put that on. We got to put that on play along. That's a play along for today. You got to get a video of that. <clears throat> well, uh, I'll see what I can do. Get a picture of that thing. I've got pictures. I, I, okay. I don't know if I can a video. Oh, to see the play along, go to live com. Click on play along. Scroll down. Click on play along. The, and it'll open up. And you're going to see the pictures of the movies. Whatever we play from today's show. And we definitely have to get picture of the count and show people his world famous facial hair Batches. I don't have to show you any stinking batches peace and love worldwide live life before life lives here. why do you need a turkey baster Hey, Live Nude Puppet fans, go to LiveNudePuppets.com to get your Live Nude Puppets t-shirt. We got one for $9.99, we got one for $12.99, we got double-sided, you name it. 
But our fans come first, the lowest prices in t-shirts, and the only t-shirt that gets you laid. It looks like a penis. <laughs> I love that.